Breaking news, U.S. concerns about China-Russia ties. When Vladimir Putin last visited China, Xi Jinping offered him the hand of friendship and cooperation. The Russian president invaded Ukraine in full force less than a month later. But in the 20 months since then, he has come to rely more and more on assistance from his eastern ally on both the economic and diplomatic fronts. A loose alliance has formed between the two leaders and their countries as a result of the war, which could have far-reaching effects on the international community and the United States in particular. Why China-Russia Ties Worry the U.S. is a Bloomberg Originals mini-documentary that delves into the rapid growth of Russia's reliance on China, the impact this has had on the Russian economy and the implications this has for the country's geopolitical situation. The video shows how she and Putin's growing friendship is strengthened by their shared distrust of the United States. In response to the Kremlin's war, the West has imposed wave after wave of sanctions. As a result, Chinese exports to Russia have skyrocketed, increasing 57% year-to-date. In contrast, the yuan accounted for nearly half of the value of all foreign exchange trading in Moscow last month, up from just 0.4% in January 2022. Coal exports to China have increased by over 100% since 2020, making China Russia's largest fossil fuel importer. China stands to benefit even more. She has long wanted to strengthen the yuan to compete with the US dollar on a global scale. More so than any policymaking in Beijing, the conflict in Ukraine has helped his cause. Here's more, how safe is Xi Jinping's bet on Vladimir Putin? I'd like to watch other original documentaries produced by Bloomberg, President Joe Biden vowed on Wednesday that the United States would forever support Israel during the Jewish state's conflict with the Hamas militant group in the Gaza Strip. Biden emphasized that Hamas does not represent the Palestinian people and that the vast majority of Palestinians are not affiliated with the group after meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the country's war cabinet in Tel Aviv. Affirming their solidarity against threats, Xi and Putin also discussed Ukraine and the Middle East. Shanghai while in Beijing on Wednesday, Russian President Vladimir Putin and his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping discussed Russia's war in Ukraine and other Middle Eastern issues, as well as reaffirming their solidarity against common threats, according to Putin. After meeting for three hours with Xi in the Chinese capital on the sidelines of an infrastructure forum, Putin told reporters that such threats make Russia-China relations stronger, an apparent reference to pressure from the US-led Western camp over the Ukraine war. In September, Japan recorded a trade surplus of 62.4 billion yen. Tokyo government data released on Thursday showed that Japan had a trade surplus of 62.4 billion yen, $416 million, in September. The value of exports rose by 4.3%, while imports fell by 16.3%. According to a preliminary report by the Finance Ministry, Japan's trade deficit in the first half of fiscal 2023, April through September, was 2.72 trillion yen. U.S. vetoes UN Security Council resolution on Gaza. NYC on Wednesday, the United States vetoed a resolution that would have been adopted by the United Nations Security Council to address the growing humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip. This stalemate follows another this week over the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas, and it highlights the challenges the international community is having in responding to issues like Russia's invasion of Ukraine and North Korea's missile programs. Toyota will keep their Japanese plant partially shut down through this weekend. Shibuya, after an explosion at a parts supplier on Monday disrupted operations, Toyota Motor Corporation said Wednesday that it expects its partial production halt in Japan to continue at least through the weekend. According to the world's largest carmaker, 
the disruption has grown from affecting 10 production lines at 6 factories on Tuesday to affecting 11 production lines at 7 factories in Aichi and nearby prefectures on Wednesday. Because of over-tourism concerns, Japan has approved fare increases for trains during the winter holidays. Tokyo concerns about over-tourism due to a rapid recovery in people traveling since the lifting of coronavirus restrictions prompted the Japanese government to announce on Wednesday that it will allow operators to raise railway fees during holiday seasons and weekends as a crowd control measure. To better connect train stations and tourist attractions and to reduce traffic jams that can cause commute disruptions for local residents, the government decided at a ministerial meeting on promoting tourism to loosen rules around introducing express bus services. At the forum, Chinese President Xi Jinping pledged to focus on sustainable growth. Shanghai at a forum Wednesday commemorating the 10th anniversary of Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative, Chinese President Xi Jinping pledged to work with partners under the initiative to promote high-quality, green development projects. During his keynote address to the forum, she remarked that the initiative has yielded fruitful outcomes over the past decade, with cooperation spanning from the Eurasian continent to Africa and Latin America. In attendance at the forum were representatives from over 150 countries, among them Russian President Vladimir Putin. To address the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, Japan and Saudi Arabia have agreed to collaborate. Tokyo, on Wednesday, Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida reached an agreement to collaborate on alleviating the humanitarian crisis in Gaza as a result of the escalating conflict between Israel and the Palestinian militant group Hamas. According to the Foreign Ministry, during their 20-minute phone call, Kishida expressed Japan's strong condemnation of the explosion at a hospital in Gaza, expressing strong anger at the enormous damage that has occurred to ordinary citizens.